Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about ketogenic dieting regarding um, insulin and diabetes and uh, laboratory testing for diabetes. So just bear with me. This is really important information. And it makes a lot of sense when you have all the truth. And when I see various uh, researchers on YouTube explain insulin spiking, they say it's bad and uh, you want to avoid it as much as possible, but that's not true. An insulin spike is a healthy thing and uh, you want to do it a few times a day, two or three times a day at the most. So here's, here's the deal. So in medicine, there's a, uh, the test is called postprandial insulin testing. So you go to lab and you go fasting, they take your blood, they measure insulin, they give you 75 grams of sugar to drink, then they measure your um, insulin at 30, uh, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, uh, two hours, three hours, they can go out to four hours or longer. But um, so in medicine, the normal range is, is very, uh, very large and uh, incorrect, basically. And um, there's a healthy range that's known. And the research was done by a guy named Dr. Joseph Kraft and then I think in the 60s or 70s, he's still alive today. And you can Google him. Um, so the fasting normal range in medicine is less than 25 for insulin. That's uh, um, milli international units per liter. That's just a little factoid there. Okay, but uh, the healthy range is actually less than six fasting insulin. So 25 is too high. Okay, 30 minutes after consuming the sugar in medicine, the range goes from 30 to 230. So that's a very broad range and it's very, t it's too high. And it's basically a worthless test if you go by those parameters. But the healthy range is less than 60. Then an hour after eating the sugar in medicine, the range is 18 to 276, crazy high. But the healthy range is still less than 60. And then after two hours after the sugar, the medical range is 16 to 166, but really the healthy range is less than 30. So I'm gonna draw this out. But I wrote this up here, Dr. Kraft Insulin on Google, and then click image and you'll see better graphs than what I'm gonna draw, draw out right now. Okay, so on the bottom part of this poster, we have here um, time, so we have half uh, half an hour here, one hour, two hours, three hours. I'm gonna do my best doing this freehand. So let's say your blood sugar is at, um, we're gonna say five. Okay, the healthy range being less than six. So when you consume um, sugar or protein and your insulin goes up, without, knowing, without doing a postprandial test, you can just take this number the fasting number and multiply it by six or seven. So then you'll know like where you're going to end up. So um, uh, five times seven is 35. So let's just draw that right here, 35. So you can, so you can spike your uh, insulin up to 35 like this. And then over time, it'll start to drop back down to five. There's a healthy spike of insulin. Now, if you're um, diabetic, Okay, and your insulin is spiking up too high. I'm gonna do this in red. Um, and you're starting off at 10, which is unhealthy, it's too high. So here's 10, multiply that by seven, and now your blood sugar is spiking up like this. Okay, that's too high. Now in the medical normal, they say 25 is okay. All right, so here's 25. And now you're spiking up uh, above my chart, you know, above 150, above 175. And it's hanging out too high for too long and it's dropping down, but it's not dropping down to five, it's dropping down to 25. Or what if it's dropping down to 35, too high. Okay, now the, Dr. Kraft has five different patterns. So here's one, two, three, I'll just draw this one. Here's number four. Okay, and then number five, pattern is this. Your insulin starts low and it stays low all day. And it could be type 1 diabetes or it could be not eating any protein and only eating vegetable carbohydrates, which have very little effect on insulin. Okay, so 
But here's the deal. You want your insulin to spike. Now, video after video on YouTube says spiking is bad and it leads to disease. That's not a true statement. Spiking is bad only when you do it like 20 times a day. You only want to do it two or three times a day. Now, there's two phases in insulin digestion. Phase one includes the spike. Phase two is the low level insulin between meals. Phase one, I'm sorry, phase two is dependent on phase one happening. You want the spike to occur in order to help phase two be at a low level between meals. Because if you don't spike the insulin up, what happens is this uh, low level, unhealthy, maintained insulin level starts off at five, later now it starts off at 10, later after that it's, now it's 15, Later after that, now it's 20, now it's 25, and your, your fasting insulin creeps up. That's another form of diabetes. That's a form of illness. Okay, so the solution here is, number one, ketosis lowers insulin overall. And then number two, protein creates that high, healthy spike better than any other food. Better than white sugar, white flour products, white pasta, white bread better than mashed potatoes. Protein is the best food to get this healthy spike going on. But like I said earlier, you only want to do it at the most three times a day. Twice a day would be better. Okay, so there you go. This is uh, a summary of a lot of information put together. And I, you know, people on uh, various researchers on YouTube, will I call it cherry picking. They'll take one piece of data like and they'll say, oh, this is bad. You know, this spike is bad. No, you gotta, you gotta have more information about that. And there's, that's a, one thing about research. Research, is, will look, research studies will look at one number, like insulin or something, and they'll forget all these other factors like, like ketosis or fasting or protein consumption or you gotta look at the bigger picture. But if you just go by, you know, research from, to research to research, you're looking at a little tiny thing and then a little tiny thing and then a little tiny thing. What I'm doing is I'm putting a lot of stuff together and uh, giving you a bigger picture. Okay, and if you appreciate that, give me a thumbs up, uh, share, subscribe, like, do all that cool stuff that you're able to do on YouTube. Thank you.